changing to help you move through the challenges of life? Then join Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church of Gastonia for an inspirational message prepared just for you. Lord Jesus, who is the Christ, and while you, and we appreciate those who are viewing, but will you help us? Why don't you help us to double real quickly, triple, by sharing this stream? Go ahead and share it right now, even those who are in the sanctuary. Go ahead and share it. And uh, we just thank God. I mean, God is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endureth throughout all generations. For the Lord our God is above all gods. You know, there are some little pseudo gods and some many gods, but uh, there is no God like Jehovah. I can't get the body. I said, there's no God like Jehovah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, get your Bible, if you will. And uh, we want to go to the Old Testament, in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter number 11. Now, Father, we honor you. We thank you for the worship. We thank you for the atmosphere that is conducive for your word. I pray now, Father, that you move McCullough out of the way and let your divine presence of the Holy Ghost speak. And Father, we thank you that the things you have ordered and ordained will be shared. That God, you get the glory of your people are built up and edified. God, I thank you for this moment, and we honor you now. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter number 11, and I'm going to begin reading at verse number 1. Last Sunday, we started a series entitled, Get Up and Do You. Get up and do you. Today we're going to do part two. Last Sunday we referenced the scripture from Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10. And we talked about enjoy life. God wants you to enjoy life. The scripture says whatever your hand has been set to do, whatever you do, he said do it now because there is really no guarantee as to how long you're going to live and that when you die, there is no more wisdom or there's no more doing of anything. And so you do it now while you have an opportunity. And we talked about how uh, God wants you to enjoy life. He created you for purpose. And I wanted to make sure that we understood that that was not a self-centered declaration to get up and do you but we discovered that listen when you are the best you that you can be that means then that you are in better position to fulfill your assignment in the kingdom of God and so God doesn't see that as selfish or self-centered and and we talked about how uh, necessary it was to uh, do whatever your hand finds to do and do it with might and do it now. Today we want to go a little further in Ecclesiastes and, and uh, we're still talking about get up and do you. But today we're going to talk about cast your bread. Cast your bread. All right. Verse number one, Ecclesiastes 11 says cast your bread upon the waters for you will find it after many days 
Give a serving to seven and also to eight. For you do not know what evil will be on the earth. If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if a tree falls to the south or the north, in the place where the tree falls, there it shall lie. He who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. As you do not know what is the way of the wind, or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, so you do not know the works of God who makes everything. In the morning sow your seed, and in the evening do not withhold your hand, for you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. And so today we want to talk about cast your bread. In the series, Get Up and Do You, this is part two. So these are wise sayings or wise writings of King Solomon. King Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived and, and the one who sought God's wisdom instruction on how to be the king of Israel. And he discovered that uh, after he had been a king for a while, he had followed God's instructions, he noticed that his life took a shift and he started going after strange women and strange gods that they were serving. And he has come to the end of his life. And, and now he's looking back and he's suggesting that all of these things that he had accomplished and achieved, that uh, those things actually became vanity and vexation. And so he writes then to all of us so that uh, we cannot make the same errors that he did. And so here in Ecclesiastes chapter number 11 and verse 1, he says, cast your bread. Now, to cast, we understand it means to send forth. It means to cause to move by throwing when you cast something. And then uh, cast uh, can suggest the turning of the eye in a particular direction. Now, he says, cast your, the King James says, cast thy. And, and, and it suggests whatever is yours, whatever God has bestowed upon you, whatever God has gifted you with whatever uh, ability and uh, grace that he has given unto you he says cast he says cast your bread now understand uh, when you think about casting what is yours we think about ownership as being good stewards and and God has given each one individually and has given us as a body and a ministry many things, opportunities, and, and gifts and talents. And, and he says, cash your bread. Now, bread is symbolic of the staff of life, the word of life, the truth. Jesus is represented as bread of life. In uh, John 6 and 33, he says, I am the bread of life. Uh, for now, bread uh, means life. It means truth. And, and whatever God said about you, whatever God says concerning you, whatever God uh, has given you, uh, what is even in the natural and in the spiritual. Bread is that which sustains. And, and so uh, Solomon says, cast what God has given you. He says, cast what God has said to you. 
He says, cast what God uh, has given and what God thinks about you. Cast whatever is in you. And he said, cast it on the water. Now, when you think about it, uh, it means then take all that God is sustaining you and take it off of restrictions. He, he says, cast it uh, to be carried far and to be carried wide. It might be your business idea. It might be your aspiration. It might be your uh, vision of whatever you've been dreaming about and praying about and, and the things that you have in your heart. It, it might even be some monetary thing. It, it, it also uh, has the connotation of giving things away. He says, cast it, uh, give it away. Now, this is uh, a season uh, that can tempt you not to be proactive. We are in a pandemic. We've been in it uh, since March, and, and a whole lot of things have happened. People have lost jobs and so forth, and, and people have lost lives, and, and people tend to be afraid in this season. And, and this is a season that uh, can tempt you to just sit and do nothing. Uh, but I want to warn you today that uh, this is the time to launch out into the deep. The word says that uh, in not many days you will find it. Cast your bread upon the waters and not many days you shall find it. Now it suggests uh, that the casting is not just throwing in vain. All right, but it's a casting forth. We uh, we operate by faith. Faith uh, is kingdom currency, and uh, we cannot even please God without faith. And and so uh, the writer is not just suggesting just throw something out there, but he's saying throw it out there with vision and throw it out there with expectation. Cast it away from you. Give it away. And and he says and it shall uh, in not many days come back to you. And so we're casting in faith. And, and the casting suggests that uh, you don't know what the results will be. Now, when it comes to getting anywhere or doing anything, nothing ventured, nothing gained. It means as much as uh, you expect the best. And I don't know about you in this season and all that we've been going through uh, in these last 9, 10, 11 months, I'm expecting even great things in the midst of all uh, that we have seen. And, and so we're expecting the best. But you know that there is the possibility that it may not totally work out the way you want it to. And so that is we move by faith. We move by faith and not by sight. So that tells me that uh, it is not uh, that we are doing it just because there's a guarantee uh, to be successful, but rather it is out of our conviction that uh, we cast and, and we move and we step uh, forward in faith. God is uh, looking not uh, for the successful, uh, but uh, for those who uh, had conviction enough uh, to do something. I don't know about you, but uh, this is the uh, season to go back and check your conviction and, and to see what's in you. I, I know you've been saying a lot and quoting a lot, uh, but this is the season now to learn to move by mandate. Uh, now, I don't know about you, I've done many things that uh, did not turn out as I had hoped they would have turned out. But because I moved by faith, uh, when God said it, I still got a blessing. Can I get a witness right there? That if you just be obedient to the Lord, when he gives you an instruction and a command, uh, God will always cause you uh, to get the benefit from what he said. Now, I told you about uh, those uh, lepers last week. 
those four lepers that were sitting on the outskirts of town and and there was a famine in the land and they were sitting there and they were starving and they said to themselves that listen if we go back into the city he said they said we are going to die there and if we sit here we're going to die and they said well maybe then if we go and cast ourselves uh, into the Syrians camp uh, that if they keep us alive they keep us alive um, but if they kill us we were going to die anyway and so they got up and moved and and in the end uh, God uh, caused blessing to come upon them I don't know about you but uh, this is a season that I I'm decreeing that I'm not going to be afraid I'm not going to hesitate about what God has said I'm going to move like these lepers and move by faith if there anybody who's in this room or anybody sitting in your living room or sitting in your bedroom who's ready uh, to cash your bread and because God said that this is not the season to sit down in fear can I get somebody if you just step out in faith I'm reminded of even Abraham when Abraham uh, God told Abraham he said listen I want you to take your son your beloved son and I want you to uh, take him and sacrifice him and so Abraham didn't know where to go and and God said you start moving and as you start moving when you get to the place he said I'm going to give you the revelation and that's going to be the place that you go up and you begin to sacrifice uh, your son and because of his obedience when Abraham had gotten to the place and, and he had built the fire the altar when and he had lit the fire and he was just about uh, to sacrifice his son and that's when an angel stopped him and said wait a minute uh, there's a ram in the bush substitute uh, your son with the ram and from that place that place became Jehovah Jireh that God will provide is there anybody who believes right now that when you trust in God even when you don't know which way you're going you don't know what his next move is but all you know is that God said it and I'm gonna trust God and when God gets to that place he's gonna work it out can I get a witness in here today and so if you want, if you want true victory, do what God said, even if it does not make sense. And even if it does not look like it's logical, uh, God's not functioning in logic. God uh, is the God of supernatural. And he can do things and make things out of nothing. He can speak things into existence. And he has given us that same power to, to be creative and, and to understand the supernatural. And I don't know about you, this is a good time to get up and do you. When you move with God, you will move in unlikely times and, and you will uh, sow in unlikely soil and uh, cast on unlikely waters. Now, now uh, some folk who are listening to me used to flow like that. You used to move like that. You used to move by the spirit. You used to move by what God said. It was nothing for you to step out. Uh, yet, but we came into this season, and this season has caused many to doubt and to fear. But I, I'm coming to you today. Uh, God says you got to shake off your doubt. You got to shake off your fear, your hesitation, and you got to let the spirit give you confidence again uh, to not cast your confidence again because he who promised is able to perform i wish i had two or three and so and so then we look at at the verse he says cast your bread upon the waters for you will find it after many days he said give a serving to seven and also to eight for you do not know what evil will be on the earth now he said listen don't put all your eggs in one basket we have to learn how to diversify. And, and the truth is God is not putting all his eggs uh, in us in one basket. It, and that's why uh, he is using all of the gifts in the body of Christ. That's why he uses the five-fold ministry in order for the possibility of the fulfillment of what he wants us to do in the earth. You got to recognize that we are God's ambassadors and God has gifted us all differently. 
He has diversified. He said, I want to use you uh, to save humanity, to get my gospel out. But I'm not going to just depend on uh, one segment. I'm not just going to depend on one gift or one type of gift. But God said, I'm going to diversify. And uh, he's given some uh, the gift of prophecy and, uh, and some the gift of tongues and some the gift of service and, and all of the diversity of gifts in, in order that he can accomplish everything in the earth that he wants to do. Now, this when you look at this, this is sort of a business-minded ideal here. He, he's talking about casting and, and, and moving forward. And when you look at verse number three, it says, If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if a tree falls to the south or the north, in the place where the tree falls, there it shall lie. And then verse number four, he, he says, he who observes the wind will not sow. And he who regards the clouds will not reap. Now, he says, he says that there are too many people who are circumstance driven. All right. If you are to find fulfillment. And you got to recognize that I can't consider the condition, all right? Yeah, you don't know uh, and uh, what's going to be, but if you're going to fulfill your dream, if you're going to walk in your destiny, if you're going uh, to walk in your purpose, if you're going to see the blessing of the Lord come upon you, you cannot be one who observes the wind and who regards the clouds and because people uh, who allow those things to dictate them are people who will never move and my God we're in a season right now where there are winds and there are clouds and, and all that type thing and, and people are afraid of what the next move will be listen tomorrow is not promised to any of us we don't know if COVID will come. We don't know if we'll get it. We don't know what our life will be. Um, but one thing is that God does not want us sitting around in fear and not still being about our assignment. I know that we got to do things differently right now. We got to mask up. We got to social distance and so forth. But that didn't mean that God said, sit down on vision, sit down on revelation, sit down on inspiration. No, no, no. We just got to seek him for wisdom wisdom as to how to keep on flowing because things got to keep on moving and we recognize that it's not going to always be this way oh come on somebody God saw this coming God knew this was coming and the same God uh, who has brought others through other years of tragedy and famine and, and pestilence and all those things he's the same yesterday today and forevermore and I know he's the God of right now and God is giving somebody uh, the word that you ought to be getting ready don't be sitting there doing nothing you ought to be getting ready for what's next in your life can I get two or three to give God praise Solomon takes time to point out that there is a group of people who refuse to cast because they observe situations and circumstances now this is suggesting uh, many things that that too many look to natural circumstances to make spiritual decisions did you hear me i said too many people and somebody you ought to go ahead and say uh, ouch and, and because you know you have looked at natural circumstances in making your spiritual decisions we want god to bless and and add to us and and to do all but uh, we are afraid to step out in faith but we don't want uh, to follow divine principles the word says without faith it is impossible to please God now the reason that God has not made many ministries and many marriages and and many careers to uh, to keep blowing up uh, uh, because what he uh, could make it because they won't cast their bread you will never walk on water if you won't get out of the boat. Am I talking to anybody? 
I said, you'll never walk on water if you never uh, get out of the boat. You got to recognize that uh, you got to experience. And I know we're in a, a season. I keep stressing that. Uh, we're in a, a season when it looks like things are not going to materialize. But when God gives you a personal vision, as well as when he gives us a corporate vision, we need to cast it in faith. I don't know what God has been speaking to you. I don't know what you've been praying about before the pandemic. I don't know what you were pursuing before the pandemic. But just because we came into this season uh, does not change the mind of God. I wish I had somebody. If God said it before, it still stands. I can't get two or three. I mean, if that's what you were pursuing before the pandemic, still be pursuing that's what today. You ought to still be willing to cast your bread on the water. I can't get anybody to help me. God is looking, uh, yeah, for those uh, uh, who uh, are faithful and those who are Diligent. You got to declare, I heard God. And we don't like to talk about that anymore. 2021, 20, I want you to understand, is your time. And uh, it's your time to start speaking again as you once did. Come on, we stopped speaking in 2020 when the pandemic hit. We stopped declaring. We stopped decreeing. And we start talking about, Lord, help me to survive. Lord, help me to get through this. Lord, and, I, and, and that's good. We ought to look to the hills from whence cometh our help. But that didn't mean that God wanted us to stop decreeing and declaring and looking beyond the right now. Proverbs 10 and 4 says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. God is calling on every visionary to get their hand working. Can I talk to you? Come on, a, vi a visionary, not just a pastor. You got a vision for your life. You got a vision for your family. Come on, somebody. You got a vision concerning your career. You have a vision concerning, concerning your uh, finance and everything concerning you. And God is calling on every visionary to get their hand working again. Some of our hands have stopped working. Some of us have stopped casting bread. I wish I could get somebody. We don't talk about our dreams anymore. We don't talk about what we want to do and what God said before. He said it's time to get back to casting again. When you cast your bread, when you give a portion, when you sow in the morning and in the evening, not assured as to the outcome, what you're really saying to God is, I recognize that I don't have the ability to forecast the future. So I hope thou in God. Yeah, in him, I'm going to place my trust. Do I have two or three? You expect things beyond your understanding. Is there anybody who's listening to me who can ask God to show me things beyond my own understanding? Come on, trust in God with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding because when you look at your understanding, it's your understanding that makes you sit down, cry, and have a pity party. But when I trust in him, come on somebody, he's going to lead me in the paths that I had no idea He's going to turn me down avenues that I did not foresee. And he did it before. Don't you know he can do it still again? So when I look at vision and, and what God is saying, uh, even I think about in ministry, what he said over the years to do, I, I've wrestled with God. I said, God, in order for us to move as you have said, uh, there are risks involved am i right come on when you move out there are some risks involved he who risks and fails can be forgiven he who never risks never fails is a failure in his whole being i don't have anybody i don't you don't like that you don't like that but he who risks and fails can be forgiven but he who never risks and never fails is a failure in his whole being. See, it takes risks to step out 
in whatever your dream is, whatever your vision is. When you're going to get up and do you, you, you got to recognize it's going to take a certain risk. So in Solomon's day, when they put their business on ships, when I think about his casting bread on the waters, casting his merchandise, in that day, uh, many ships uh, wrecked. They had shipwrecked, and many pirates uh, stole the cargo. Ships' captains were dishonest. Yeah, uh, they, they were not, uh, they didn't have any insurance to cover. Then often there was a long wait when they cast their merchandise, when they cast their vision, let the ships take it over to be sold and traded. They, they had to wait on the return they had to wait on the outcome they had to see what was the reward and so why would a merchant take a risk because the reward is great come on somebody will you be willing to take a risk when you understand that the reward is great when i step out and trust god uh, even with small things even with my vision even with my next step even with my next book even with whatever god uh, has put your family in the position of put your dreams in the position of you understand that the reward is greater than the risk i can't get anybody the devil would try to tell you uh, yeah that the reward uh, doesn't warrant the risk but I got to tell you that if you step out and you begin to risk and trust God and God begins to supply all your needs, God begins to work out your situation, God begins to fulfill your dream. Aren't you glad today that you took some risks before and you saw the reward of it and the enemy said, now nah, you better sit here, you better sit still. Uh, nobody in your family has achieved anything like that. Nobody like you, uh, your background is not going to afford you that. Nobody like you has ever gotten that high in life and you said but I don't care devil I'm going to step out and I'm going to take a risk and I, God showed me that if you take a risk with me he said I'll reward you greater I can't get two or three that'll help me and so the people the people are afraid to risk and walk with God they, and they don't want to risk and, and even the world knows that in investing there is risk so God, God responds and he, tell, he said, tell them not to be concerned with the risks that they uh, take with me. God said uh, he was really taking a risk dealing with us. <laughs> you think about it. God has a plan and he's looking to see if we are the right people. He is risking lives being saved. He is risking lives being delivered, counting on us. He's risking all of these things. He, he, he's risking vision on us. He knows uh, how self-centered we can be. And uh, only that uh, being about our own uh, business. And he knows how we get caught up in creature comforts. But he is risking that we will be his people, we, we read a scripture uh, on Wednesday night in Bible study, and it just blew us away when I read it in the message translation. It's 1 Timothy chapter number 1 and uh, verse number 12. And uh, we were really talking about how Paul, Paul was so excited because God had uh, put him in the ministry, God had given him the opportunity knowing what his life had been. Paul was one who was persecuting the church and dragging saints away and, and causing harm and wreaking havoc on the church. And then when God turned him around, changed his name and called him to be an apostle to the Gentiles, Paul is here telling Timothy how grateful he is and how humbled he is because God used him in ministry and so in the message bible first timothy 1 and 12 says i'm so grateful to christ jesus for making me adequate come on somebody to do this work which suggests that i wasn't adequate before Oh, come on now. I know, listen, you, you got preachers, you got apostles and preachers.
prophets, you got singers who are anointed, and all the teachers and, and evangelists and all these things. Uh, but the word says that uh, before you were not even adequate. Come on, somebody. Uh, it, it, because it's not your gift uh, in you. It's not your ability and your talent in you. God made you adequate. Come on, somebody. And so he said, he said, I am so grateful uh, to Christ Jesus for making me adequate to do this work. And then he says, the next line, he said, he went out on a limb. Good God of mine. That thing hit me. That God went out on a limb. Huh? Entrusting me with this ministry. God goes out on a limb to trust us to do what he has assigned us to do. Many people are gifted and, and God has gone out on a limb uh, to trust you and, and to know that you're going to be his ambassadors. To know uh, that you're going to fulfill your assignment. And so you can't be sitting down and not casting your bread, not casting your vision, not walking in your purpose. And you got to get up and do you and doing you means that I got to get in the best position that God would allow so I can be about God's business not being about my own life and doing my own thing so that I can be who God wants me to be and your testimony will be like that I know mine is my testimony is just like Paul. I thank God for putting me in the ministry. I thank God for giving me the opportunity to pastor in the same place over 30 years. I thank God. I know it wasn't me. I don't have sense enough. I don't have righteousness enough. enough. Uh, but I'm grateful for Jesus making me adequate to do this work. And he went out on a limb entrusting me with this ministry. The only credentials I brought were uh, ineffective and witch hunts and arrogance. He said, I had nothing really to offer except that I'm a vessel. How many of you thank God and that I'm glad I'm not what I used to be? I know where I used to be. I know the life I used to live. But thank God he emptied that old life and filled me with the new life so that I could be about his business. And so he took a risk. He went out on a limb for us. So, so uh, my risk then is that at any point, when you think about risk to, to, to walk in your purpose, to walk in your vision, to walk in your role, um, the truth is this pastor has had to learn to take risks with God as God has taken risks with me. What do you mean, preacher? My risk is that at any point, friendship could have kicked me out. Huh? Like, like it's happened before, but I was willing to take the risk to hear God and to cast bread and to cast vision on the water so that God could bring us to the place that we are. And God said, I have not brought you this far to leave you because there's some other things you want to do. My sister sent me a, a little, I guess, post or something yesterday. And it says when a pastor starts to get excited when he gets a new position, when he gets a new church. Uh, he, he gets excited thinking that he is going to change the world. And he ends up getting fired because he changed something on the bulletin. Come on, somebody. Y'all understand that. You, you understand. You come in. You come in. It's a risk. It's a risk. You come in thinking that I'm getting ready to make something happen. I'm getting ready to God use me to help win and to turn lives and do great things. And he makes a change on the bulletin. And the people get so upset until they release him. Come on. It's a risk. God would never do anything without risk. And so I'm willing to risk with you as, as God risks with us. And if you are a bread caster, you will risk with God. How many bread casters we got in? Come on, are you a bread caster? Come on, are you a bread caster? I'm talking to you right there. Yes, you in your room right there. Are you a bread caster? Huh? If you are a bread caster, then you will risk with God. I'm, I, I thank God I told you about Abraham, how, how Abraham was a bread caster. And, and, and David was a, a, a risk taker. And uh, he was willing to risk to walk with God. He, he, he was willing to risk going out as he spoke about killing Goliath. 
Everybody else was afraid, but uh, David said, I'm a risk taker. He said, as a matter of fact, there was another time when the bear came upon me and when the lion came to eat up the sheep and, and I stepped out and I killed the bear and I killed the lion. He knew that that was not under his power, but he took a risk to be out there with the sheep knowing that if something came upon him, God was going to bring him through. And so he was willing to take another risk. All the other soldiers and even his brothers and even the king saw they were afraid. But David said uh, that I will take a risk with God. And he went out and he slew Goliath. Come on, he took Goliath's own sword and cut Goliath's head. I just wonder, do I have any risk takers that I'm talking about today? Even in the face of a pandemic, even in the pay, uh, face of, of things being uncertain, do I have anybody who's a risk taker, a brave? bread caster. A bread caster is full of the word of God. A bread caster is full of faith. A bread caster is full of truth. Can I get somebody that will help me in here today? I need some bread casters in this season of uncertainty. I need some bread casters who will trust God. I want to read something here and then I'm about uh, done. And um, go over to Psalm 33. Go to Psalm 33, and we'll, we'll end this message. Psalm 33, verse number 6, gets, get this. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the host of them, by the breath of his mouth, he gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deep in storehouses let all the earth fear the lord let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him for he spoke and it was done he commanded and it stood fast the lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing he makes the plans of the peoples of no effect and yet the counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he has chosen as his own inheritance. The Lord looks from heaven. He sees all the sons of men. From the place of his dwelling, he looks on all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashions their hearts individually. He considers all their works. No king is saved by the multitude of an army. A mighty man is not delivered by great strength. A horse is a vain hope for safety. Neither shall it deliver any by its great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Come on, somebody. Uh, we are in that season right now. Our Lord, our soul waits for the Lord. How many of you decree that my soul waits for the Lord? He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him. Because we have trusted in his holy name. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us just as we hope in you. It's foolish to uh, trust in chariots and horses because our trust is in the name of the Lord. And when you trust God, uh, God will cause you uh, to walk in great things. And, and so I thank God this morning that and we got some people who are full of trust and, and full of faith and, and full of word you can you can hit yourself and say I'm a bread caster I'm a bread caster I'm one who will put my vision on the water put my inspiration on the water put my finances on the water put my hopes on the water come on somebody put all my dreams and, and my vision on the water and not many days we shall find it again some people have cast your bread on the water uh, just like uh, the word says and some of you uh, have said that I've been coming Coming up with nothing it's not working out it doesn't seem like it's gonna work but let me tell you to stay faithful I'm reminded I'm reminded of the time when Peter and the others were out fishing and they had fished all night and they had caught nothing 
And they were coming in frustrated. They were coming in uh, aggravated. They, uh, they, they were just feeling humiliated that they didn't catch any fish. How many of you uh, have been feeling humiliated lately and frustrated lately? And, and you're about to throw in the towel. You're about to give up on everything you've invested. Uh, well, Jesus uh, shouted out to them. Uh, and uh, he said, listen, cast your net on the other side of the boat. Now, Peter knows, being the professionals, uh, they said, listen, we, we, Jesus, you keep preaching and we know about fishing. We, we're the professionals. We, we have toiled all night. We're tired. And Jesus said, no, do what I said. Now, when you think about it, uh, that there was not that much distance uh, from one side of the boat to the other side. And so, logically, if, I, if there's not any fish right here, then there's not going to really be any fish right there. But they said, nevertheless, I need some nevertheless people to get ready. They said, nevertheless, that we're going to do what you said. And they cast the net on the other side. And the Bible said that uh, the fish were so great. They started filling the net. And, and there were so many fish that they had to call for another boat to help them to get in. The nets were about to break because God had, Jesus had fulfilled uh, what his promise was. And I need some nevertheless folk who have been casting your bread. You've been believing God. You've been trusting God. You've been getting up and going forth. And you've been casting, and it looks like there's nothing that's been uh, happening. It looks like it's not going to come forward. But can I get you to hear God's word when God said, trust in me. Cast your net on the other side. Just take a step of faith with God, and won't he work it out? Can I get two or three? God said in Habakkuk 2, 2 and 3, he said, write the vision and make it plain upon the tablets that he may run that read it for the vision is yet for appointed hour it shall speak and not lie though it tarry wait on it it shall surely come do y'all believe that this morning if you're going to get up and do you and fulfill your assignment in the earth you got to cast your net yeah you got to cast your bread upon the water and not many days you're going to see it uh, yeah pandemic or not yeah, yeah, a season of doubt or not, you're getting ready to see what God uh, has been promising you. It is the principle of seed time and harvest. Yeah, cast your vision, cast your dream, cast your hope, cast putting it all out there and say, God, I'm willing to take a risk with you. I know this is a pandemic, and the Lord is saying to wait until it uh, is over. Some of y'all are saying that I believe I need to wait until this pandemic is over to make a decision. No, 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 no. Last week, as I told you in Ecclesiastes 9 and 10, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with might. Because listen, tomorrow's not promised. And when you go to the grave, there is no vision there. Huh? There's no more manifestation there. There's no more wisdom there. There's no more opportunity. The grave is filled with too many who died full. I told you that last week. Miles Monroe said it. There are dreams and visions in the graveyard. The graveyard is one of the richest and the most wealthy places because many people took what was in them to the grave. There's greatness in many of you. Dreams. New ideas, ways, witty inventions. And he said, cast your bread. Get up and do you. Cast your bread. It's time. I don't know how God's going to lead you to do it. I'm not, I don't know how uh, in, in this time of masks, social distance, I don't know. I'm just trying to do what the Lord says. You ask him how to get it done because God I told you last week, don't wait on what normal was. We got a new normal. And we don't know what the normal of tomorrow is. And so there can't be any waiting. There can't be any hesitation. You got to step out in whatever God has said. Go back. Pull those visions out. Pull those papers out. Go back and pull those uh, prophecies out that were spoken. 
the things that you've been writing, the things that have been waking you up in the middle of the night, the things that, that you ask God to cause you to be able to fulfill. God wants to use you in his service. He's taking a risk to gift you, to empower you, to anoint you. And you won't even step out. You're sitting on gifts. You're sitting on anointings. It's time to gather those things back up and say, God, in this season, I'm going to be everything you want me to be. I know we're in a, a time of uncertainty, but God, you, you sit high and you understand exactly what's going on in this season. So I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. I'm not sure of how to do it, but I'm going to trust you to get it done. I'm going to trust you, God, to give me the wisdom and to give me the inspiration and the direction to get it done. How many of you with with me this morning. I, I, are you with me? Get up and do you. Cast your bread. Part one was enjoy life. Part two is cast your bread. This is your season. This is your time for God to do what he has assigned you to do. I want to pray for somebody right now who may be standing in fear God has God has given you great weapons for this season God has given you great power for this season God has given you ideas that nobody else has there are gifts in you that nobody else can function in and we've been listening to the news. We've been overwhelmed by the deaths. We've been overwhelmed by the unrest in our nation. But I want you to understand that God is still God. And God is still in control. So our faith is going to be that I'm going to cast my bread. God, show me the way. So let me pray with you. Father, in Jesus' name, there are people who are hearing. They want to cast their bread. They want to walk in vision that you have given for their lives, for their families, for their marriages, for their children. And they are strapped down with fear. And God, we know that perfect love casts out fear because fear brings torment. And some are being tormented by what's next, by what they're dealing with now. They, God, have become like deer in headlights, afraid, startled, frozen. But, Father, I pray that you would activate in all of us another level of faith. As we hear your word, faith comes by hearing and hearing by your word. Some, God, have cast away their confidence. Some have even walked away from you altogether. There are some who are listening to me right now, God. They used to function highly in ministry. They used to be those that were dependent and dependable in the ministry. But God, they allowed any number of things to cause them to stop. Father, I pray now that you would just convict them to cast their bread again. Cast their gift, lay their gift out, lay, their, lay everything concerning them out. And say, here I am, God, use me. And then, God, there are those who gave up on their personal dreams. Startled. They have forgotten who you have called them to be. So God, I pray right now they would stir up the gift that's in them. Even that was in them by the laying on of hands. Even as Paul told Timothy. And then God, I pray that there be some people who have never 
heard you they've heard you this morning somebody will maybe come on this line sort of going through Facebook and stopped it wasn't by accident you want to save them I pray father that they will even now be saved I pray right now God that they would surrender their life to you and let you make all things new for them and so God I pray right now that that they would acknowledge that they are sinners and that you're the son of God and that when they invite you in right then they have eternal life with you that's our prayer today got some pastor that stopped casting his bread touch him this morning some evangelist some apostle got some praise team member some musician God some teacher they stop but father help them now to 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 ask you to reactivate what you put in them help them to get up and do them oh God they there are those who didn't think they matter there are those God thought that their gift was too small there are those who's who thought God I've tried before and it failed and they just gave up God help them to, to cast their bread again and risk with you trust you don't lean to their understanding it's in Jesus name that we pray amen if you if you're viewing If you're looking for dynamic worship, inspirational teaching, and a friendly atmosphere, you can visit us on Sundays at 221 West Bradley Street in Gastonia, North Carolina. For more information about our ministry, you can call 704-865-9016. To order your personal copy of today's message or any other broadcast, please call 704-865-9016 and indicate the broadcast date. Or you can just visit us online at www.friendshipgastonia.com. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast with Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church. Make sure you join us next week at the same time.